Tom and I spent what is termed a lot of windshield time together. Um, and I learned early on that Tom liked it warm in the car and I liked it cold in the car. And uh, we were both very thankful when they invented individual thermostats on the car. And uh, Tom would crank his up all the way and I'd turn up the air conditioning all the way. And we used to joke, Tom used to joke that we were gonna form a thundercloud or a front between the two of us in the front seat. To this day, when I see those separate thermostats, I think of Tom. Another time we were in Salt Lake City, and uh, normally when we rented cars, we weren't using his company car. You know, you get the Taurus and you get the Impala. Well, we got a chance to get a Volvo years ago, and um, Tom was driving and I was in the passenger seat, and at one point, as I was looking around the car, I realized that there was a little panel between the uh, driver's side and the passenger side, and took the panel off, and the fuse box was there, and we we giggled about that. Tom being a car guy, he said, I wonder, you know, is it safer? I mean, what's the, the value of having the fuse box located between the driver and the passenger seat? Normally it's on the, you know, on the driver's side, hidden away. And uh, Tom giggled and said, you know, well, maybe there's a, a safety feature. Maybe you change fuses while you're driving. And I laughed about that, and and then, and, and Tom, again, with his sense of humor, he says, I wonder if you start pulling out fuses, how long it would be before the car would stop running. And so I turned the, the legend over on the little fuse box, and, and uh, I asked him, you know, well, would that do it? Oh, no, that just shuts off the lights. Oh, would that do it? And we came up with this game. We call it fuse box roulette, you know. Uh, one party pulls the fuse, and if the car keeps going, um, uh, you're okay, and then the next person pulls a fuse, and if the car stops, well, then you lose. Um, <laughs> we used to tell people we played fuse box roulette. Don't tell anyone. We actually never actually played it, but it was fun uh, telling people that we did. Finally, uh, Tom and I were in Logan, Utah, and uh, one of our favorite places to go, although downtown Logan, not a lot of restaurants, and the one we liked to go to was Tony Roma's. And we went to the Tony Romas one night and sat in a booth, another booth, another booth, another booth, where other people sat. And uh, when we sat down, I noticed there were three businessmen having a meeting next to us at the booth. And Tom and I started eating. And halfway through dinner, suddenly there was this commotion in the next booth. <clears throat> and someone was clearly choking. And uh, I could see that he, the gentleman, who was a big man, got out and was clearly uh, in distress. He was choking. Uh, the two businessmen he was with, um, I noted, stayed seated in the booth, you know, in shock of what was going on. And this guy was standing up choking. And Tom, uh, being the person that he is, smaller guy compared to this guy, Tom went right over there and started giving him the Heimlich maneuver. And uh, Tom could just barely get his hands around this guy. He gave him a couple of uh, pumps and no success. The guy was still choking. Tom looked at me. I did a couple of uh, pumps. No success. And then Tom went back to try to do it. And then eventually the guy lifted up his hand and then spit out uh, uh, the food. And at that point, obviously, I, I noticed that the two guys he was with, the two businessmen, were still seated in the booth. And uh, uh, the guy took our names, asked for our cards, thanked us. And uh, about Two weeks later, uh, both Tom and I received a big box individually in the mail. It was a big box, and I opened up the box, and it was a huge piece of cheese. And it turns out that the, the gentleman was the president of a cheese company, and I'll never forget what it said. It said, obviously, thank you for saving my life. And that was the end of that. And um, To this day, I, I probably would have been like the two guys in the booth had I not been around Tom Mapson. Tom was the kind of guy that he saw the situation, he went over, took control of the situation. Tom was really good about, uh, I think, being around people and helping them be better uh, than uh, they could be by, their, by themselves. I miss Tom.